Kingdom Come Deliverance is a game that I wanted to play for a long while now, but never really got myself to start it. But after some really bad performance from the games I was excited to play, and I said you know what, it's time. So today, we'll be taking a look at Kingdom Come Deliverance and my experience playing the game in 2023. I want to start off by saying that I really enjoyed the game. It wasn't perfect or the best game I've ever played, don't get me wrong, but I had a fun time exploring the lands of Bohemia. But before getting into the plot and everything, I want to talk a bit about the development of this game, because it's a pretty great story if you ask me. If you don't know, this game was developed by Warhorse Studios, which is not a big studio. And this game, well, it's pretty ambitious. And the reason that I said it's a great story is because this game started as a Kickstarter back in 2014. The reason I told you all this is because I'm sure you know Many Kickstarters are scams, but the fact that the developers, Kingdom Come delivered what they promised, shows the dedication and passion they had for this game. <laughs> Alright, that was a bad joke, I will stop, I'm sorry. The game takes place in 15th century Bohemia, during a period of time that actually took place in history, where Sigismund of Luxembourg imprisoned the King of Bohemia, which is also his half-brother Wenceslas. And this is a big part of Kingdom Come's plot. And this is what made this game famous, the fact that many people call it the most realistic game. And I tend to agree to some extent with that statement. The only realistic part of the plot is the situation with Sigismund and Wenceslas and the sacking of Scarlet. But in terms of gameplay and mechanics, the game is pretty damn realistic. But to sum up where I'm going with this, there's no dragons in this game, there's no monsters in this game, and there's no magic in this game. And you might think, well, this is gonna suck then. Well, no, because the game is really well done. And this brings us to the actual game. After a summary of the world's events and a beautiful presentation of the game's world, we are greeted by the game's protagonist, Henry, who is a bit like all of us. And I'm not talking about living in a hut in the Middle Ages, I'm talking about being lazy. Because that's why it took so long to do this video. Henry is the son of the Scullitz blacksmith, which makes him a little more important than the other peasants. His father is forging a sword for the Lord of Skelets, Sir Redzig, so he sends us into town to have a bit of tutorial. After we come back, we forge the sword and we get to talk with Sir Redzig, which was a big deal for a peasant back then. But if you got to liking Henry's parents up until this point, well, too bad, because they're gonna die in the next 5 minutes or so, because Sigismund attacks with his army of humans. If you don't know what humans are, here you go. Henry's parents die in the sacking, and as he runs to the keep to take shelter, he gets told to ride to Talmberg to warn them that the humans are coming. So, that's what we do. The lord of the castle takes care of our wounds and takes us in, and we inform him what happened to Skelet. So here we are, homeless, orphaned, with the only thing to remind us of our parents being the sword our father forged. Well, not for too long, because we go back to bury our parents, which everyone tells us is stupid, but we do it anyway, and surprise surprise, it was stupid, because some bandits steal our sword. And this pretty much is the plot of the game. That guy stole our sword, and we must get it back to give it to Sir Redzig, because it's our father's last wish, who, by the way, never told us that that's his final wish, but fair enough. The plot isn't something that we haven't seen before, by any means, but it's good enough to launch us into this amazing world. But if you think that just because you unlock the open world, that means the tutorial is over, you are making a big mistake that I also made. Just like in any other game, when you gain access to the open world, that means for the most part that the tutorial section is over, and that you can do whatever you want. Well, this is to some extent true for this game also, but I don't know if you noticed, but the game never properly taught you the combat mechanics. Yes, you had a little sparring lesson with the master back in Skelets, but if you think it's that easy, you're making a big mistake. Meet Captain Bernard. He might be the most important NPC in the whole game, and not because of the part he plays in the story, but because he's the one that teaches you how to fight. And this brings us to the combat of Kingdom Come, which I'm sure you heard of, because I have to say, it might be one of the most unique styles of combat I've ever seen in an RPG. As many things in this game, the combat is very realistic, and take what you want from that. 
but the only thing I think you should know about before playing this game is that the combat at the beginning might turn you off a bit because it's hard to figure out. But I'm gonna give you a little secret to help you master the combat. Just do your training lessons with Captain Bernard and learn as fast as you can the perfect block. I don't know what exactly what it's called but it's the move where you block and you insta hit the opponent. Once you learn that the game gets much easier. But you also have to learn how to fight multiple opponents at the same time which is hard but you'll get the hang of that as well. Basically what I'm trying to say is don't skip this beautiful game just because the combat is something different because you'll miss out on a great experience. But now let's get back to the story. Teresa saved us from the bandits that stole our sword so we woke up at her uncle's house near Rate. And as it happens, Sir Redzik is also in Rate, so we go see him and inform him that we will do everything in our power to bring him the sword that he ordered. When we meet him, we also meet Sir Hanush and Sir Capon. Sir Capon is the rightful ruler of Rate, but the city is being commanded by Sir Hanush until Capon grows up. With our offer to bring Sir Redzik his sword back, we kinda become his squire and our first task is to investigate an attack that happened in Neuhof at the stud farm. So we get there and we start poking around to try and find out who attacked and why. After a bit of investigating, we find out that a stable hand called Ginger was somehow involved in the attack so we track him down and question him. He tells us he doesn't know who attacked the stud farm but he also tells us he recognized someone with a limp from Uzitz. So we go there but that man has been brutally murdered by the attackers who wanted to cut loose ends. The last person who talked to Lugos is Father Goodwin so we spend the next couple of days trying to gain his trust in what has to be one of my favorite missions in the whole game because it's just so fun. In the end, the father tells us what he learned from Lugos and with that information we find someone that knew the attackers and he tells us where their base is located. With all of that information gathered, we go back to Sir Redzig and he sends us to scout the base. When we get there, we discover that the bandits aren't just some crooks but in fact a small army so we gather troops from the whole region to mount an attack on their fortified base. This is the first time in the game we get to see large scale combat and it's honestly impressive even though when the NPCs are fighting each other sometimes the animations bug out. But after we deal with them we find out that their leader is in fact the same bandit that stole our sword so you know what that means. It's time for a revenge boss fight. By this time in the game I was pretty accustomed with the combat so the fight wasn't that hard. The hardest part about the fight doesn't actually happen in the fight but in the skirmish from before. Because you don't get healed after the cutscene where you confront the leader, so if you have bleeding, like I had here, it's basically impossible to win because you will die from the blood loss. So I had to reload the save and basically cower behind my allies in the fight to not get hit. After we defeat him, we accidentally kill him so he can't tell us what happened to the sword, so that's unfortunate. This whole questline was good, but I couldn't help to feel a bit bored when I played through it because it was basically a goose chase. Yes, it's true that the big battle was great and the same can be told about the Father Goodwin quests, but other than that it was a bit unexciting and linear. And you will see that this theme repeats itself throughout the whole game. The developers send us running errands across the map and after 2 or 3 hours something big happens. I'm not saying that there should be a big battle every 5 minutes, but the majority of every questline can be summarized like this. Go talk to NPC number 1, do a job for NPC number 1, and as a reward for the job you did, you get information about NPC number 2 that is somehow tied to the investigation you are conducting, and then something exciting happens. I know that that's basically how every game works, but in Kingdom Come you go to a location, then go to another location, then come back to the first location, and so on. Basically, all I'm saying is that things get repetitive after a while. But anyway, after the raid is over, we find a chest filled with a lot of coins. The bad part about this is that the coin is fake. So what's more dangerous than an unknown enemy? An unknown enemy with unlimited budget, so naturally our next task is to find who is forging the fake coins and stop them. We also learn that in Merhoed, there was another attack similar to the one in Neuhof, only this time the peasants 
managed to hold the attackers back and not only that but they also managed to capture one of the attackers so we go there to investigate. When we get there we also learn that the village has been hit by an unknown plague and our captive is sick with it. And during this quest the game cranks up its realism to the max. Naturally when you hear of the plague you get the objective to cure it so you start inquiring about the symptoms and whatnot. But if you take too much in-game time to learn what the plague is, the captive will die. From a plot point of view, this is no big deal because you get a letter on his body that basically tells you what he would have told you anyway. But if he dies, you are unable to cure the plague from that point onward. So again, the realism of this game messes with the gameplay and takes away from the experience. Again, I'm not saying that realism is bad for gaming, but it has to have some limits. It's an open world RPG, of course I'm gonna take a while to complete the main quest, so the developers should have thought about that. After we read the letter, we find out that a merchant called Manhart and a mysterious foreign knight are somehow involved in this. We go to Sasau and we find the merchant's attacked carriage and the mysterious knight stealing something from it. We await for him back at the Sasau inn and after a quick fight we understand part of the story. This merchant, Manhart, was transporting the forged coin and the knight called Ulrich has the same orders as us, stop the operation. He gives us a letter where the forging process is explained and we take it to the coin master in Vratay that tells us to find blacksmiths that work with copper in Sasau. So we go to the town and ask around to see what we find. We discover many people involved in the operation including the blacksmith that works with copper. I still find it funny that in order to make him confess, we have to beat up his son, but fair enough. After we make him confess, the same thing that I stated before happens. He tells us that if we help him with something, he would tell us what he knows, which I find really stupid because we literally caught him in 4k that he commits a crime against the king, but it is what it is. We complete the task that he asked us to do, which is a duel with another smith, and we learn that a group of bandits forced him to do it. After this, we get the task to try and join them to find out more information. To join them, we do some secret signal shit, and after that, they tell us that if we want to gain their trust, we must kill someone. The only problem with that is that that person is in the Sasau monastery as a monk, so now we have to join as well to kill him. Luckily, we hear of a lord that is joining the monastery against his will, so we make a deal. We join in his stead and he gets to run away. Naturally he accepts because who wants to be a monk? When we join, another novice monk takes us around a tour of the monastery and of course that he is the person we seek because we are the main character and we have plot armor. Instead of killing him, we both agree to just fake his death. For this we have to gather some items that are not very hard to get, you just sneak around the monastery and after we gather the items we put the plan in motion and we escape. But because he still is a bandit that attacked Neuhof, I beat him up and take him to Rate for interrogation. With that taken care of, we meet with the bandits that congratulate us for our job and send us to their base. And this base is even bigger and more fortified than the last one. It has a wall and tents and everything. When we get inside, we meet their leader and, unfortunately, we also meet Istvan Toth. If you don't remember him, don't worry because I didn't either. He was a noble that Sir Redzik hosted back at the beginning of the game, so he remembers us and, well, we become their hostage. During the interrogation with them, Istvan drops the twist of the game. Very inconsiderate. I'm sure you'd rather hear it under different circumstances and from someone else, boy. But beggars can't be choosers. Your father, your real father, is alive. You even know him. It's your liege lord, Radzik Kobela. Yes, you heard right, Sir Radzik is actually Henry's father. Honestly, I didn't expect that, but now that I look back on it, there were some signs. During the time he interrogates us, Ishvan gives the cliché bad guy speech where he tells us all his plan and motivation. He just wants to control the region, basically. After he leaves, 
the guy from Skelets that turned us on the bandits, that stole our sword, helps us escape. During this escape sequence, you can actually lose all your gear if you don't take it yourself. After we escape, we go back to Ratei, where we prepare another attack. This time, we bring even more men and we ride to their encampment. Again, the same thing I said before happened. We did errands for around 4 hours, and now the game rewards us with a big battle. I enjoyed the missions from before, but again, the same pattern repeats itself. We attack, and we beat the bandits. But, the only problem is that we beat them too easily, and that's because Ishvan Toth pulled a rope Stark on us, and left a smaller force behind, and with the bigger force he captured Talmberg, the keep of Sir Divish. The next day, we mount a desperate attack to recapture the castle, but during that attack our father, Sir Redzig, is captured. So, Ishvan now has two high-profile hostages. Lady Stephanie, who, by the way, we had a little spicy time with earlier in the game, and Sir Redzig. So now we get to the end game. But before talking about the final part of the story, let's take a look at the world of Kingdom Come and the side quests in the game. The world I really like. It's very immersive and unique and you can get lost in it with hours. There is also a lot to do, from little insignificant quests to treasure hunts and big quests. My favorite area is Verte, but I think it's because we spend most of the time there. But the only thing I don't like about this version of Bohemia is that the bushes have hitboxes and you can't ride through the majority of them. This has to be the most annoying thing ever because the horse riding is already a bit wanky and mixed with the foliage it's really annoying. Another thing that I have to say it's a weak point of the game is the voice acting. Even though I think that the main characters and Henry really do fit with their voices. But in the side characters you can really see they run out of budget. This game also has some really good side quests but the majority of them just feel empty. In most of them you just go from point A to point B and complete a task. But I have to say that the quest that annoyed me the most is the one where you go back to Skelets to secure the silver mines in the area. There is a part in which you have to make your way out of the mines and it's basically a maze. But the part that annoyed me the most is that when I finally made it out, my game crashed and because this game doesn't have autosave for the most part, I had to redo it. The only way you can save whenever you want is if you have an in-game item called save your schnapps. That has to be the most annoying thing about this game, that you can't save as much as you like because of that stupid item. The in-game explanation for the reason you can save after you drink save your schnapps is that it tastes so good you will never forget that moment. That has to be one of the most bullshit excuses for world immersion I've ever heard. My favorite side quest is the one with Father Goodwin like I said before, because it's just so fun. I also like the quest with the executioners. But now let's get back to the story. The only way we have a chance to retake the castle is to lay siege. And you know what that means? We get to build a trebuchet. And of course I got excited about that because who doesn't like trebuchets? The only problem with the most perfect war engine is that no one knows how to build one because it's the middle ages and you can't just look it up online. So that means we have to find the master engineer to come and help us. Luckily, there just so happens to be one in Sasau. So we go there and we help him escape from a contract he is under and he comes to Talmberg and starts to work on the trebuchet. While he does that, we try our best to supply the camp with things like food, beer, priests, doctors and some other things. But after a few days, the trebuchet is finally done and we begin firing it at the castle. After a two day barrage, we finally launch an attack on Tarnberg and some intense fighting takes place, but we quickly retake the castle. In the end, Ishvan is forced to accept defeat and release Lady Stephanie, but keeps Sir Redzig as an insurance that he will not be killed. So we are forced to let him go. After this, we ride with Capon to get our father and Capon pursues Ishvan but he doesn't catch him because, well, they had to leave room for a sequel. After this, we finally have the conversation we all waited for with our father, where he explains everything. He tells us that he and our mother were young and, well, they did what young people do. 
but because our mother was just a peasant, he couldn't marry her, so he left us in the care of Martin, the man we thought of was our father. After this, us and Sir Redzig take a walk in the sunset together, and the credits roll. Of course, there is the epilogue, but nothing really important happens there, it just makes room for a sequel. And this is it, the full retrospective on Kingdom Come Deliverance. I have to say that this game grew on me while I played it, and in the end, it was a really good experience. I strongly recommend it to you because you'll not regret it. But now I want to talk a bit about the future of this channel. I don't know if you like this type of content, but I really enjoy making it, and I really do hope you enjoy it as well. If you watched this far in the video, I really want to say thank you because it really means a lot. But with all that being said, I'll see you again soon.